So there was a request to figure out, uh, to post a video for how to find con uh, critical values for confidence intervals using jump. Um, so there are some screen grabs in the chapter eight notes, but in case uh, you just wanted to see another walkthrough, I've got some quick examples here. So the first one is, what if we want to find a 98% confidence interval for P? So this would be the true population proportion. So in that case, we would want to use uh, PE plus or minus CV times SE. And now we don't have a sample here. I don't have a context or anything. So we just want to figure out how to get this CV. And since we're doing a proportion, we want to use a Z star. So that means using the normal distribution. So we would go to the jump distribution calculator and we would use the normal distribution with mean zero and standard deviation one. So that is the Z distribution. Now, because we are doing a confidence interval, we have the probability and we're trying to figure out the Z critical value. So we're trying to figure out the value from a probability. So we want to pick the second option. The other thing we want to do is make sure that we pick central probability because we want that confidence level to be centered in the middle of our distribution. And we want to go an equal distance away from the middle of the distribution in both directions. Now to remind ourselves, we want a 98% confidence interval. So that means that we want 98% confidence in the center of our normal distribution. So I'm going to pick 0.98 as our probability. And that means that our critical value is going to be 2.3263. So Z star equals 2.3263 because again, if we go 2.3263 standard deviations in either direction, that gets us 98% probability in the middle. Looking at another example, if we want a 92% confidence interval for P, so still the true proportion, we still would want to do PE plus or minus CV times SE but without context and without any data, we don't know what the point estimate or standard error are, so we're gonna focus on how do we find this CV. Because it is a proportion, this is going to be another Z star, assuming we have satisfied the sample size requirements, which is that we have 15 successes and 15 failures. So Z star here, well, I'm gonna pause this and ask you to see if you can figure this out on your own. All right, so assuming that you've tried this, I'm gonna show you how. So we would once again go to jump and we wanted a 92% confidence interval. So we make sure we have got the normal distribution with mean zero and standard deviation one. We input probability to calculate the values. So again, we know the probability is 92%. So we go here and we say we want 92% probability in the middle. And we can see that because this is a smaller confidence level, we're going to get smaller z-score. So now our critical value is 1.7507. And that's how with lower confidence, we get a narrower interval. So this interval is going to be wide and this interval is going to be narrower. So lower confidence gets us a narrower interval. So let's see how we do this with a confidence interval for mu. So here we want a 91% confidence interval for mu, and it's important now that we know what our sample size is. So for a confidence interval for mu, we would still want PE plus or minus CV times the standard error, but Beyond knowing our sample size, we don't have any context, so we don't know the point estimate or standard error. So all we're going to focus on here, excuse that, is trying to find the T star. And we know it's a T star because we're doing a confidence interval for mu. So we are assuming we do not know the population standard deviation and that the standard error is going to be based on the sample standard deviation. So with T star, we're going to need to know 
the degrees of freedom, and the degrees of freedom is n minus 1 for a one sample confidence interval for mu. So that's why we needed to know the sample size. And so that will be 13 minus 1, or 12. So to find this, we go to jump. We go to the t distribution. And we can see here, we don't have to worry about the mean or the standard deviation. But what we do have to worry about is the degrees of freedom. And that's why we had to get that 13 minus 1, or 12 because it's going to change the shape of the distribution just so slightly. The tails are going to be a little narrower. But everything else remains the same as before. So we still want to input the probability to calculate values, and we still have a central probability. So before, we wanted a 91% confidence interval, so we want 91% for the probability, and that's going to put 91% right in the middle. And we can see that our values, our t-score is 1.844. So we want to go 1.844 standard errors away from that center of the distribution to capture 91%. So our t-star is 1.8440. Now I'm going to ask you to pause this and find the t-star for a 96% confidence interval from you when n equals 50. Okay, so again, we don't have any context, so all we're gonna do is try to find t star, remembering that the degrees of freedom is n minus one, so that's going to be 49, which of course is 50 minus one. So we go to jump, and we have to remember to change our degrees of freedom. Instead of 12 now, because our sample size has changed, our degrees of freedom is 49. We have our probability, that's our confidence level, which is 46, excuse me, is 96. So we're gonna put our probability in to get our T critical values, which is 2.1099. So the difference between a confidence interval for P and a confidence interval for mu is that for P, we're gonna use a Z star. For mu, we would use a T star. For P, because it's a Z star, we have no degrees of freedom. And for T stars, we do need the degrees of freedom, but otherwise the mechanics is the same. We input the probability, we make sure it's a central probability, and then we pull the value off.